Hi again. Let's learn about dictionaries. Wonderful facility in Python. The concept is an unordered mapping. Well, when we looked at sequences, we found that we could refer to any of the items in a sequence with square brackets in an integer because those items are all in a row. We might come to wish that we could refer to items by a string instead of an integer so that we can have strings in those square brackets. When we do that, we have a dictionary. We have no control over the ordering of this dictionary. The hash table implementer who did the work for us underneath the covers decided the hash table order and how to retrieve the object from the string as quickly as possible. We can use, besides strings, anything that won't be moving around. It has to be something solid, like a string, an integer, or a tuple, because all those things are immutable and therefore can be put into your key for your dictionary. Dictionaries are called key value pairs. The key goes in the square brackets, and the value is the associated object with the key. Now let's take a look at PyDictDef. You want to study this because your exercise is going to be about adding facility to this. This particular program keeps track of the keywords in Python. Let's look at the output to start. Here we're running it, and we see we get a little menu. If we type P for print, then it's going to print out our little dictionary of keywords. Break, continue, for pass. Alphabetical order, lovely. If I ask for A, I'm asking to add a new keyword to the dictionary. What word shall it be? Yield. And it means, more or less, it means return and start here with the next call. We'll be studying that keyword soon. Here we gave zero keywords. So it came back to the main menu where we gave an F to find. It asked for a word to find. We put in a four and it gave us the meaning. We asked for range and it could not find it and told us so. And that's right, because range is not a keyword. It's a built-in function. We come back to our main menu and when we just print enter, we quit. So we'll be looking at how we made all that happen, and your job will be to add another facility. We see here in our main that we have a function called setup_pydict, and what comes back from that is our Python dictionary, and we push that into run menu. So let's look at setup_pydict. We see on line six. We are setting up an empty dictionary. So curly braces means the empty dictionary, nothing in it. It's a falsehood like all empty data objects. If you want to initialize a dictionary with some data, here we're doing that. You have curly braces and you have a key, colon, a value, comma, for each key value pair. That's PyDict2. We're going to put all the key value pairs from PyDict2 into PyDict with the method update. Very good method, very useful. All the keys and values from PyDict2 are now in PyDict. If we already had a break in there that meant go away from work for a little bit, that would all be gone. We'd have the new break from a loop and skip the else. Here we're using that square bracket notation, that was our motivator, to put the word pass in our dictionary, which we're saying throw the ball. Well, that's wrong. That's not what the keyword means. So we'll just do it again with do nothing. And now throw the ball is out of there. That datum is gone from the computer. So that's our dictionary. Now, you would never do all that. That doesn't happen. This particular function 
is just to show you various facilities. So now we have a little dictionary. Let's go take a look at the run menu. Here's our dictionary coming into our run menu. Here we have another dictionary, and that's what you'll do once you get what dictionaries are. You'll just be splashing them around in your code whenever you need a mapping. So here are our choices. If the word add happens, we want to call collect entries. Collect entries is the name of a function that has been defined. Here, in fact, here's oh, print entries, which will happen if the user asks for a P standing for print. So that's what this dictionary is. It is the mapping from what the user types to what function gets called. We're going to call make prompt on the choices. So that dictionary now gets passed into make prompt. And what comes back is that string we saw over and over. We'll look at that function a little later. But there's that string, that prompt, that the user saw. Now we're going forever, and we're getting some input from a user. And if we don't get any, we're done. We're looking at the first character that the user gave us. That's why the user could type P, or print, or anything that starts with a P. And print would happen, because we want to look at the first character, the lowercase version. Now then, line 82 is a Python miracle. We're going to say for maybe choice and choices. Now remember that choices is this dictionary. We are for looping through a dictionary. You may give some thought about what you think maybe choice should be, but I'll just tell you. It's each key in the dictionary comes through the for loop. That's what you want, because if you want the value for that key, you can say choices, square brackets of maybe choice. OK, maybe choice, though, is the whole word print, for example. So we look at the first character of it, and we see if it is the given choice, which you remember is the first character lowercase version of what the user gave us. If these are a match, then we have a hit. And we do this, and we'll look at that very carefully soon. If we run through all these choices and did not find a hit, then we go into the else of the four. That's what it's for. And that means we didn't get a hit. There's been no data. And we give our error statement, and we come back around in our while loop. However, if we did find a given choice that matches, then, choices of maybe choice, now remember that maybe choice is the whole word while given choice is the first character. Choices of maybe choice is one of these functions. Then we have a pair of parens, which means call it, and stick in the pie dictionary. So, so that's how these various functions get called. This is a very useful notation. We want to be sure you understand that. OK, now we're going to go look at the various functions. Print entries, that's one we ran first. Notice that we are for looping through the sorted version of our PyDict. This reminds us that dictionaries are not kept in alphabetical order or any order that's going to make sense to us. And they're not necessarily consistent. The idea is that the dictionary is implemented in hash table order, whatever the implementer has that they feel is the fastest way to implement it. And that is what's happening here. Let's look at print entries. The dictionary comes in, and once again, we're for looping it, but we're for looping through the sorted version. Sorted also acts on an iterator, just like a for loop does. And we know that the PyDict iterator gives us each of the keys, not in any order, or any order that makes sense to us. And so we sort them so we get them in alphabetical order. Then we print each key and each value. Going up to collect entries, we go forever asking for a word. If they don't give us a word, we return. If they do, 
we ask them for the meaning of the word, and here we are putting it in the dictionary, that lovely notation. Looking at find definitions, we go forever, we ask for a word to find. If they don't give us one, we go back to the main menu. Otherwise, I'm doing a try except. There are various ways you can access a key from a value, but this one's a straightforward one. And I like the error that comes out, key error, because it's analogous to an index error when you have square brackets with an incorrect index. And we say it's not in the dictionary if there's an error, otherwise we printed it out. You'll also find various ways to initialize data into a dictionary. Various ways to get it out, various ways to initialize it in. You'll do a help on a dict, D-I-C-T, to find those. Let's look at make prompt. Once again, we're calling sorted on our dictionary. Now, this is our dictionary of choices, not of keywords in Python. Now we have a list of the keys in alphabetical order. We're going to join them up together with a comma. Each one then, here we're going through that choice list in our four, we're going to have the formatted string where we have a pair of parens in the string, and there's the first character, and there's the rest of the characters. So that is what we saw in our prompt. I call it the guts because I want to put it in another string. Choose guts, enter to quit, and that was our prompt. It's time to try the exercises. First, I tell you some experiential things to help you be more familiar with dictionaries. But then, you have to go get that PyDigDef from the labs, and you're going to change it so that there is a definitions that you can ask for, and it's going to give you the definitions alphabetically with their keys. It's a significant little problem. Our solution will be in various ways. I'll see you when you